We're back with the GCN Racing News Show. This week, we recap a thrilling second week of the Tour de France in which many big stars have gone home. The sprinters' dreams are dashed in the mountains, Nibali's by a spectator, whilst Gianni Moscon is expelled from the race for punching another rider. I'll be discussing all of that and question who really is the leader of Team Sky. We also take a look back at all the action from the Benet Ladies Tour in Belgium. It's been an incredibly hard week at the Tour de France. Many of those still in the race were on their knees heading into today's rest day, but many aren't here at all. First up, Vincenzo Nibali. The Italian had been riding a solid race, sitting in fourth place overall, until this incident up Alpe d'Huez. Subsequent footage showed that his crash was as a result of a spectator's camera strap snagging on his handlebars. He did get back on his bike and only lost 13 seconds to the winner Geraint Thomas on the day, but incredibly he did that with a fractured L10 vertebrae. That meant the end of the race for Nibali, who was now hoping to recover in time for the Vuelta, but it also meant a significant change in the dynamic of the race. I mean, if there's one thing you can guarantee, it's that Nibali would not have settled for fourth place overall, and he would have, at some point, caused some serious problems for Team Sky in the last week of the race. Now, it led many, including us, to speculate whether these climbs need to be barriered the whole way up. I mean, don't get me wrong, I think that would be a terrible thing for the sport, for the spectacle, for the genuine roadside cycling fans. But in 2018, when teams are spending millions of euros preparing for this one single race, it really can't be influenced by roadside spectators. What's the answer? I really don't know. Uh, if you've got some answers, let us know what you think in the comments section down below. Now, the other riders to have gone home are mainly sprinters. Cavendish and Kitter were outside the time limit on that stage to Alpe d'Huez, whilst the following day, Greipel, Grunewagen and Gaviria called it quits as they realised they had no chance of finishing inside the time limit. Some people saw that as a reason to rethink the time limit and the way it's calculated, whilst others said that the sprinters need to harden the well, just harden up, basically. Uh, well, I'd like to come to their defence, personally. Contrary to some thinking, sprinters aren't at the back laughing and joking around and being lazy. They are trying their absolute hardest to get through. Going home from the Tour de France is the last thing that they want to happen. They simply couldn't go any harder on the day. And I'm going to give you an example of this. So, Mark Cavendish and Marcel Kittel were in a group that finished just 30 seconds inside the time limit on the mountainous stage 10 to Le Grand Bornard. That stage was almost exactly the same as this year's Etape du Tour, which was won by Victor Lafay, who was a pro cyclist with the Cofidis squad. The Kittel and Cavendish group rode fast enough that day to have beaten Lafay on the day. They're not hanging around, let me tell you that. It's just that the climbers are that much better at the front of the race. I've got the utmost respect for sprinters. They don't have an easy day at all. Them riding in the mountains is akin to asking Usain Bolt to run a marathon. Rigoberto Aran, meanwhile, didn't start stage 12 due to injuries he sustained on the Roubaix stage, which is a big blow for EF education first, whilst Gianni Moscon was expelled yesterday for serious aggression after TV footage appeared to show him punching Fortunaire Samsic rider Eli Jezber. Team Sky issued an apology, as did Moscon himself, which we can see now. I'm sorry for today's incident and I totally regret my actions. I would like to personally apologize with, um, to Eli Gisbert for the incident on, the, on today's stage. What happened was wrong and was a bad example coming from me uh, to everyone. The problem for Gianni Moscon is that this is not an isolated incident. Last year, he sat out of racing for six weeks after admitting making racist comments towards Kevin Razor. And after that incident, Team Sky said that a repeat of it would result in a termination of his contract. Later last season, he was accused by Sebastian Reichenbach of deliberately pushing him off in a race, although Moscon was later cleared of that incident. And finally, at the World Championships last year, he was disqualified for hanging onto a team car. And it's such a shame because the guy is clearly such an enormous talent on the bike, although unable to behave professionally. And it's going to be interesting to see if he has a future at Team Sky. And there's no doubt that this is going to hurt them in the race itself. Moscon has been handling a lot of the early domestic duties each day, and it means they're down to just five helpers around Chris Froome and Geraint Thomas. Which brings us nicely onto our next question. Who really is the leader at Team Sky at this year's Tour de France? As things stand, six-time Grand Tour winner Chris Froome is one minute and 39 seconds behind his teammate Geraint Thomas. 
Thomas has continued to toe the line of saying that he's working for Froome, and on Alp Duez, he clearly was before Froome attacked. But then it came back together, and Thomas has looked every bit as strong as any other rider in the race every single day. So what are they going to do? The problem is that they've also got Dumoulin to handle, he's just nine seconds behind Froome, and he's a better time trialist. And that is a new situation for Team Sky, whose GC leader has always been the strongest time trialist of the GC contenders. If Froome attacks and gets rid of Thomas but not Dumoulin, that's a big problem and could be basically a bit of a cock up for them. Uh, Thomas isn't going to deliberately lose time, let's face that fact, and must now be thinking that he's on the verge of picking up the biggest prize in professional cycling. Whilst Froome, who has won the last three Grand Tours in a row, is surely not going to be happy with second place. It's such an intriguing situation that I, for one, cannot wait to see how this plays out in the last week, and also how Tom Dumoulin goes, because he has looked basically unflappable so far. Let us know what you think, uh, who is going to win the Tour de France in 2018. Bear in mind there are three mountain days to go and one individual time trial. So will it be Geraint Thomas, Chris Froome, Tom Dumoulin or Primoz Roglic? Let us know by taking the poll which you can see on the screen right now. Earlier on in the week though, I thought this was a really nice gesture. Uh, Edvald Barsenhagen of Team Dimension Data broke his bike on stage 11 and without his team car nearby, Team Sky gave him one of their spare bikes so that he could continue and finish the stage. Now that is against the official UCI rules to accept equipment from another team and so Team Sky and Edvald were handed a 150 euro fine each. And here is a picture of Edvald taking 150 euros back to Team Sky Service Carnarvon the following day. I thought that was a really nice gesture on both sides. Wiggle high fives Katie Archibald got her Benny Ladies Tour off to the best of starts last Thursday by winning the opening 3.9 kilometer prologue in quite a dominant fashion it has to be said. And not a huge surprise from an Olympic and world champion winning track cyclist, but to beat Mariana Voss into second by 11 seconds is still very impressive indeed. Voss was back to her best though on stage two, winning a three up sprint for the win and coming home far enough in front of the bunch to go into the overall race lead by six seconds over Archibald. 19 year old Lorena Viebs of Park Hotel Valkenburg continued her impressive season by winning the bunch sprint on stage 2A in front of Jolene Dura no less, whilst Canyon Stram took a 1-2 on the stage 2A time trial with former world champion Trixie Warak at the head of affairs. There was another impressive ride for Archibald in fact that day who took herself to within one second of Voss in the overall. Voss though increased her lead on the final day courtesy of some bonus seconds. At that stage was won by Marta Bastianelli whilst Archibald slipped to third, leapfrogged by Lisa Klein. And so Voss has won this race for the second year in succession, continuing her quite incredible career whilst Klein was the best young rider and Viebs won the points classification. We shall finish now with an event that has been touted as the toughest one day event in cycling. It is called the Tour du Mont Blanc. It's 330 kilometers long, and has a total of 8,000 meters of elevation gain. I mean, just look at the profile of it. This is not for the faint of heart, although I do quite like the look of that downhill start. The ride crosses three countries in that 330 kilometers, and this year we had a record time. It took Nicolas Roux 11 hours, 17 minutes, and 49 seconds to complete that ride, which is an average speed of 28 kilometers per hour. Uh, Roux is a man who's no stranger to success at this event, but hats off, that's not a shabby average speed with that amount of climbing. Okay, that's all for this week. Next week, we'll be wrapping up the final week of the Tour de France. Plus, we'll have the Men's and Women's Prudential Ride London Classics and also the North Cape 4000, which is a 4,200 kilometer event that takes riders from Lake Garda to the North Cape, crossing 10 countries in the process. We shall see you then. Uh, don't forget that if you go to shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com, we've got all of our July merchandise available over there. You can find a link to, the, to that on the screen right now. And also, if you would like to see who is the true boss of GCN, we recently did a race ourselves, up the Angleroo no less. You can find that video by clicking just down here.